For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2228, the Law Enforcement, Mental Health and Wellness Act of 2017, as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 2228, a bill to provide support for law enforcement agency efforts to protect the mental health and well-being of law enforcement officers and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Goodlatte, and the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee, each will control 20 minutes. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on H.R. 2228 currently under consideration. Without objection. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Today we are voting on H.R. 2228, the Law Enforcement, Mental Health and Wellness Act. This bill is designed to equip local law enforcement agencies with information and resources to address mental health challenges faced by officers. Our policemen and women report for duty every day, facing and responding to danger on our behalf. We often see them and we always appreciate them. However, we often don't consider the mental aspect of the challenges facing our officers who put themselves in harm's way to protect our communities. Today, we consider the toll their jobs take on their psychological well-being. Every day, these brave men and women face some of the highest stress situations one can imagine. When officers hang up their badges at the end of a shift, they cannot easily hang up the lingering effects of their high-stakes encounters. As this stress accumulates, it can lead to serious physical and mental health problems. Research has shown time and again that police officer occupational stress is directly correlated to heart disease, divorce, alcohol abuse, and major psychological illnesses, including acute stress disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and anxiety disorders. Over 900,000 men and women serve as sworn law enforcement officers in the United States. Each year, more of them die from suicide than from gunfire and traffic accidents combined. Many departments have started mental health programs as preventative measures. These programs have been successful in reducing the number of police officer suicides from 300 in 1998 to 126 in 2012. But in departments where mental health and wellness programs remain absent, these problems continue. We must address this gap. H.R. 2228 directs the Department of Justice, in consultation with the Departments of Defense and Veterans Affairs, to equip local law enforcement agencies to address mental health challenges faced by police officers. It also permits DOJ's Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services to award grants to peer mentoring pilot programs and directs the Attorney General to make recommendations on how to make these and other programs more effective. Mr. Speaker, we all recognize the profound challenges faced by law enforcement in this country. Today, we also acknowledge the unseen toll that these challenges can take on the health of these brave men and women. I would like to thank Ms. Brooks of Indiana for introducing this bill and my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for this important step in providing law enforcement agencies with the resources to treat severe mental and physical stress. Our men and women in blue deserve the appreciation and support of all of us. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support this legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Chair recognizes the gentlelady from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I rise to reserve uh, to utilize such time as I may consume. Gentlelady is recognized. But I rise as well to wish and hope that all of my colleagues and Americans had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and again to thank the men and women of the United States military for their service. It is particularly noteworthy uh, that they serve uh, in this time um, when families are gathered. I thank Mr. Goodlap for collaborating on this legislation, and I rise in support of H.R. 2228, the Law Enforcement Mental Health Act of 2017, Ensuring the mental health and well-being of our law enforcement officers is paramount to the safety of our communities and the people our officers take a solemn oath to protect. I'm also very pleased to acknowledge Val Dimmons, a colleague 
uh, and as well a member of the Homeland Security Committee of which I serve. Uh, we are better off uh, for the uh, experience, commitment, and professional career that she had as a law enforcement officer and chief. She is one of the co-sponsors of this legislation, and I look forward to hearing from her. Let me also uh, take note of the fact that uh, Texas experienced a, a depth of sadness over the holiday weekend when we lost one of our Department of Public Safety officers who was killed uh, by a perpetrator during the Thanksgiving uh, weekend. We pray for him and his family. H.R. 2228 is intended to provide support for law enforcement agency efforts to protect the mental health and well-being of law enforcement officers. I support this legislation as a good first step towards Congress addressing the various matters surrounding the mental health of our law enforcement officers. We must recognize that law enforcement officers play a special role in our communities with exceptional responsibilities to protect and serve. Where they see, encounter, and respond to horrendous situations that are both dangerous, stressful, and often life-threatening. Imagine those officers who came upon that scene Sunday morning in Texas a few weeks ago, where 27 Texans were murdered in church and 20 uh, were injured. Imagine churches that are frightened about worshiping. And imagine, as I left my hometown, Houston, that there were law enforcement officers who were gathered to meet with pastors to give them comfort. They are there for us. As well, for example, law enforcement officers have had to respond to several recent tragedies, which include the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida, where 49 people were killed and 53 others wounded. The killing of five, other, five officers and the wounding of nine other officers, along with two civilians in Dallas. The San Bernardino shooting of 14 innocent employees. The Las Vegas massacre, where a gunman killed 58 innocent concert goers and injured nearly 500 others and again, most recently, as I indicated, on November 5th, the deadliest mass shooting by an individual in Texas, the fifth deadliest mass shooting in the United States, as well as the deadliest shooting in an American place of worship in modern history, where 26 were gunned down in Sutherland Springs, including an 18-month-old child and a pregnant mother, and where 20 others were injured. These horrific occurrences have become all too common in our today's society. These chilling tragedies continue to affect us all, Imagine the impact that they have collectively on our law enforcement officers with whom these traumatic situations remain long after the threats are reduced. Everyone has returned home and communities they serve have regained a renewed sense of safety. Imagine that officer that comes upon horrific traffic accident that kills a family. Imagine their pain and their concern. Requiring these officers to continue to serve without providing them an effective avenue to process the day-to-day -day crisis does an injustice to them. That's why this is a very important initiative, and I'm really excited to support it. I want to also raise for my colleagues uh, that I've been a long-standing advocate for helping police officers as we have worked together uh, with the chairman of the committee and other members of the committee. And I want to make mention of the Law Enforcement Trust and Integrity Act which uh, takes a comprehensive approach to addressing policing issues, including recognition of the importance of sustaining mental health, mental well-being of our officers. This piece of legislation addresses tragedies uh, where we've seen uh, actions take place uh, and countless unfortunate incidences have happened, maybe because of the lack of de-escalation. And so this bill, which I hope we can move along as this bill that we have, the underlying bill, requires the Attorney General to perform an initial analysis of existing law enforcement accreditation standards and to recommend areas for development. That gives training. It also takes into account mental health needs uh, and funding needs. It authorizes the Attorney General to make grants to states, units of local government, Indian tribal governments to study law enforcement agency management and operations and to develop pilot programs to implement best practices. It requires the Attorney General to study the prevalence and impact of any law, rule, or procedure that allows a law enforcement officer uh, to not be able to answer the questions 
posed as quickly as possible by any of the authorities investigating situations. It authorized appropriations for expenses related to criminal and civil enforcement activities by the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department. It requires the Department of Justice to establish a task force uh, to assist local investigations, and it requires each federal, state, and local law enforcement agency to report to the Attorney General on the actions in that particular department to help that department assess its own work requires the Department of Justice to cooperate with the National Law Enforcement Office Memorial Fund, something that was very important to me, to create and provide a distinctive medallion to be issued to the survivors of law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty, or memorialized on the National Law Enforcement Officers uh, Memorial. Uh, as well, uh, this is in, uh, in sync with the task force that was held in the last administration that offered to discuss ways to improve policing and to help our individual police officers. We want to be partners for safety and security and community police relations, and we want them to have good health and the ability to serve their public in a good health mindset. Under today's bill, the Attorney General shall review current mental health practices and services of federal agencies and report to Congress develop resources to educate mental health care providers about the law enforcement culture across the board and develop evidence-based therapies as a result. I believe with this legislation and the law enforcement and integrity uh, legislation, if passed, it will create an atmosphere where law enforcement officers will be comfortable in sharing their thoughts or their assessments or best practices. Under this bill, the underlying bill, the Director of Community-Oriented Policing Services shall conduct case studies that focus on programs designed primarily to address officers' psychological health and well-being and submit such a report to Congress. The Attorney General shall also consult with the Secretary of Homeland Security and the head of federal agencies to examine the mental health needs of federal law enforcement officers and the efficacy of expanding peer mentoring programs. Ensure the recommendations, resources, or programs protect the privacy of officers. That is extremely important. And report these findings to the Congress no later than one year after enactment. Mr. Speaker, the key of all of this is to build the trust between community and police, and police, community, and police families, and families of those who come within the range of the law enforcement. If we can all work together, if we can trust each other, we will have a better system of justice. It is a good first step, this bill, and I look forward to working as well on other law enforcement bills, including the law enforcement and integrity uh, bill uh, that uh, I've just so noted. With that, I reserve my time. He reserves the gentleman from Virginia. Mr. Speaker, at this time, it's my pleasure to yield such time as she may consume to the gentlewoman from Indiana, Ms. Brooks, the chief sponsor of the legislation. The gentlelady is recognized. I thank the gentleman from Virginia for yielding. I also want to thank the gentleman uh, for his leadership of the uh, House Judiciary Committee and for his many, many years of support for law enforcement. I also want to thank the gentlelady from Texas uh, for her support of this bill and for um, leading uh, the, the voice uh, today to talk about trust between law enforcement community and the communities in which they protect. And I believe that this bill will go a long way in helping our law enforcement and that the communities in which they serve to protect should recognize uh, the types of trials and tribulations that our law enforcement officers face every day. I also want to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who, before coming to Congress, were leaders in the law enforcement communities, uh, including the gentlelady from Florida, who I believe we will hear from, uh, who um, day in and day out served and protected their own communities. I introduced the Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act because our nation's law enforcement officers often deal with the unthinkable. They daily face situations that can be hard to process, impossible to forget. The work our nation's law enforcement officers undertake put incredible strains on them, on their families, that places them in situations that increase their chances of developing mental disorders. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, between 7 to 19 percent of police officers have symptoms of PTSD. In comparison, only 3.5 percent of the general population experience PTSD. Furthermore, the suicide rate for our nation's law enforcement officers is double the rate at which officers are killed by violent felons. In the 5th District of Indiana, 
Boone County Sheriff Mike Nielsen desperately and publicly pleaded for a better mental health service after his daughter, also a police officer, tried to take her own life. She was struggling with PTSD after responding to a case involving the murder of a mother and her four-year-old son. Our police officers face a culture of silence when it comes to mental health challenges, and we know they need better access to mental health services to allow them to cope with these horrific types of unforgettable situations. As a former deputy mayor of Indianapolis, responsible for public safety, I know firsthand the struggles our law enforcement community members face in their work. The Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department recognized this problem several years ago and began a pilot program that provides mental health services to officers, including counseling and referrals to doctors, psychologists, clinicians, to get them the help they need. And that program actually inspired this bill. Recognizing the tremendous work already being done by the Veterans Administration and the Department of Defense that have done on behalf of our nation's service members, this bill will require the Justice Department to consult with those federal agencies to determine which mental health practices they've developed that would be most useful in the law enforcement setting. We also have to encourage our officers to share their experiences with their colleagues who can understand and empathize with them about the traumatic events they experience while serving in the line of duty. To that end, this bill establishes a grant program within Justice Department to establish peer mentoring mental health and wellness pilot programs within state, local, and tribal law enforcement agencies. Mr. Speaker, this is an issue that affects the law enforcement community across the country. I urge my colleagues and I want to thank my colleagues in joining me in supporting this important proposal. Our nation's law enforcement officers are duty bound to protect and serve, and it's only fair that we work to protect them as well from the stress and trauma that they face to keep our communities safe. With that, I thank you and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Virginia reserves. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from Texas. I, I thank the gentlelady for her remarks, and uh, we are working together to build that trust uh, and to safely secure the community and our officers. With that in mind, as I indicated, Mr. Speaker, I'm delighted to be able to yield to the gentlelady from Florida who brings to the United States Congress very important contributions. As the ranking member of the Criminal Justice Committee, these voices are well needed. Uh, it is Congresswoman Val Demings, who is a former chief of police of the city of Orlando, Florida. I yield to her two minutes. The gentlelady is recognized for two minutes. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you so much to the gentlelady from Texas for being a leading voice on this issue. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of the Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act, which I am proud to co-sponsor with my friend and colleague, Representative Susan Brooks from Indiana. I also want to thank all of my colleagues for their support on this very important issue. Our law enforcement officers respond to some of the most horrific scenes and situations. After 27 years in law enforcement, how well I know. They respond without regard to their own personal safety, and they are the thin blue line that stands between a safe place and the dangers that lurk in our society. We should all thank God for the men and women who patrol our streets, our neighborhoods, our businesses, our schools, and our highways to keep us safe. Being a law enforcement officer is not just what they do, it's who they are. All the dangers, the unknowns, the graphic crime scenes, split-second life and death decisions. Don't be fooled. There is no other job quite like it. The national president of the Fraternal Order of Police said this, unlike many other professions, sometimes you can't leave the job at the office. Mr. Speaker, as a former law enforcement officer, I am proud to co-sponsor the Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act. This important piece of legislation would ensure that agencies are better equipped and officers have the resources needed to effectively deal with the stress and mental health challenges associated with the job. Mr. Speaker, what an amazing opportunity we have to pass legislation to protect 
the mental health and overall well-being of the men and women in blue as they continue thank you so much as they continue to protect and take care of us and with that I yield back thank you gentle lady yields back the gentle lady from Texas reserves the gentleman from Virginia reserves the gentle lady from Texas uh, my pleasure now to yield to a distinguished member of the Judiciary Committee, the Subcommittee Chair on Intellectual Property and Senior Member from New York, Jerry Nadler, for three minutes. Gentleman from New York is recognized for three I minutes. I thank the gentlelady for yielding, Mr. Speaker. I rise in strong support of the Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act. This bill would take a number of steps to help protect the mental well-being of those who take extraordinary steps to protect all of us. The Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services at the Department of Justice reports that law enforcement has an occupational fatality rate three to five times higher than the national average for the working population. Officers respond to horrible situations that are dangerous, stressful, and sometimes life-threatening. In addition to protecting law enforcement officers from the physical hazards associated with doing their daily jobs, we must also do more to protect them from the mental and emotional difficulties resulting from their work. That is why I support this bill, which would initiate several efforts to help the mental wellness of our law enforcement officers. The bill calls for the collaboration of the Justice Department, the Defense Department, and the Veteran of Veterans Affairs Department to determine which mental health practices and services from the military agencies may be adopted to help civilian law enforcement. The bill would expand the allowable uses of existing Justice Department grants to include establishment of mental health and wellness programs within state, local, and tribal law enforcement agencies. The bill would direct the Justice Department and the Department of Health and Human Services to develop educational materials for mental health providers about the culture of law enforcement agencies. And finally, the bill would consider improvements to crisis hotlines to better serve those from law enforcement who seek to use them. Although I am particularly proud of New York's finest, I am glad that this bill will help law enforcement officers in every jurisdiction across the country. Their service certainly deserves the assistance this legislation will provide. Therefore, I ask my colleagues to join me in supporting this bill today, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentlelady from Texas reserves. The gentleman from Virginia reserves. The gentlelady from Texas. Again, let me thank uh, the two pre prior speakers, Congresswoman Demings and Congressman Nadla, for a very insightful, uh, very uh, 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 important remarks on this particular legislation. Uh, I'd like now to uh, yield to the distinguished gentleman again from uh, New Jersey, someone who I know has a passion for first responders as we have worked together even more uh, closely uh, after the heinous uh, tragedy of 9-11. I yield to the gentleman, uh, Mr. Pasquale, uh, three minutes uh, from New Jersey. The gentleman you. from New Jersey is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, the general lady from Texas. And again, congratulations to the chairman uh, who has distinguished himself in law enforcement since he's been here. Uh, as the co-chair of the Congressional Law Enforcement Caucus and an original sponsor of H.R. 2228, I rise today in strong support of law enforcement, of this Mental Health and Wellness Act, and I want to join with so many of the organizations that have, are supporting this, the Fraternal Order of Police, the National Association of Police Officers, the Major County Sheriffs of America, the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, the National District Attorneys Association, and the Sergeants Benevolent Association. I was proud to have worked with my co-chair, uh, David Reichert, and Representative Susan Brooks, Val Demings, Doug Collins, on the support piece of legislation for the law enforcement community. We all agree that the brave men and women in law enforcement put themselves in difficult, if not dangerous, and sometimes life-threatening situations every day. We teach officers how to handle every different situation, whether it is a domestic dispute, uh, whether it is a hostage dispute or any other. But we need to think about the officer who comes away from that particular experience with himself. That's about it. Goes home to his family. 
It's absolutely critical we provide our law enforcement officers with all the resources they need to effectively do their job. I've consistently fought for new equipment, advanced technology to provide physical protection for law enforcement when they're on duty. However, we must also ensure law enforcement has the resources and support and training to address mental health issues as well. The stresses on law enforcement have continued to grow in recent years. This can have a big impact on officers' physical and mental well-being. That is why officer mental wellness needs to be a priority from the day of hire to the day of retire. We know too many officers struggle with depression, suicidal thoughts, post-traumatic stress disorder. As co-chair of the Traumatic Brain Injury in the Congress of the United States, myself and Dr. Collins, who was the Republican from Pennsylvania, uh, started out 20 years ago uh, we could fit the people, number of people in a telephone booth. Uh, we just about knew what we were talking about. And that has changed how we approach our military forces on the field. I yield the gentleman 30 more seconds. Thank you. According to the Badge of Life, a group that studies post-traumatic stress disorder among police, we've heard the police, we heard tonight of how many suicides we're talking about. Tragically, many police officers with P PTSD are not even aware they have the problem. Often they remain on their beat doing the job without help or support. By discussing the importance of improving an officer's mental health, we can reduce the stigma surrounding mental health issues in the law enforcement community. I think that this bill will bolster the connections between local mental health professionals and law enforcement. And I urge a passage, and hopefully the Senate will do it at justice. Thank you. Gentleman's time has expired. The gentlelady from Texas reserves. The gentleman from Virginia reserves. The gentlelady from Texas. Uh, Chairman, uh, let me ask the gentleman from Virginia, do you have any additional speakers? Are you prepared to uh, close? I am prepared to close. Thank you. Um, then I will yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleladies, recognize. Let me first of all uh, thank uh, Congresswoman Brooks and Dimmings for a very astute uh, initiative. And I look forward to us working uh, together, along with the chairman, on other items uh, that impact uh, the service of our officers and the better police practices. And I cite, of course, the Law Enforcement Trust and Integrity Bill. And, Mr. Chairman, I wanted to make mention of the fact that we have been meeting on police issues for almost two years uh, in the police working group, and it's been very uh, impactful. And I look forward to us uh, igniting another uh, meeting and uh, being able to hear from both police and community uh, because we want a safe community and we want a safe uh, law enforcement. Uh, let me also say, as I close, that many police officers are veterans and they have been in a war situation. Uh, and that means they've faced a uh, crisis, uh, they've faced uh, the violence of war, uh, and they obviously have uh, experienced uh, bouts, uh, possibly a PTSD, or as we know that they do, uh, they may not yield to it and may not know it and go right into serving, uh, whether they are a fire or police, they go right into serving the community. And therefore, this legislation will be enormously helpful uh, to them. So as I said early, this is a good first step to helping to enhance the mental health or the mental well-being of our law enforcement officers. These officers endure stressful events on our behalf in the interest of protecting their communities. And so we will all benefit from the effective implementation of this legislation. Therefore, I support this bill, even as I encourage us to continue our work in additional legislation to help foster better coordination between our police officers and the communities they serve. One final point that I've listened to officers, and they have said to me, with all that they deal with, coming upon a circumstance where a child has been injured or killed is one of the most devastating experiences they have had to have. Just imagine that this mental health bill will work in all of the issues that they have to address. And I ask my colleagues to support the underlying legislation, uh, which is the Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act, uh, H.R. 2228. And with that, I yield back. Gentlelady yields, the gentleman from Virginia. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to again uh, thank the gentlewoman from Indiana, Ms. Brooks, uh, and the gentlewoman from uh, Florida, Ms. Demings, for uh, their leadership on this issue. I uh, will say again how much I appreciate the work of the gentlewoman from Texas on a whole host of law enforcement and criminal justice reform issues, uh, and uh, it's my hope that we'll move uh, uh, a great many of these reforms through this House in the very near future. You certainly have my support uh, for working together in a bipartisan way to accomplish that. This piece of legislation is a great step in that direction. Uh, you can't expect law enforcement uh, to keep all of us safe uh, if we're not looking out for their mental health, which uh, I, I can only imagine how stressful the job is. I've had the opportunity to do several ride-alongs over the years with police officers in my district, uh, and they have uh, my utmost respect. Uh, I hope that uh, every member of this House will vote for this important legislation, uh, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 2228 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.